pleasure. Thank my you, pleasure, sir. Bro. Did you call your shot with the Mandalorian? Did they come to you? Did you? Are you? Were, were you? You're in that movie? It's a t uh, TV series on uh, Disney. 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 I thought it was a movie. Um, well, if you like spaghetti westerns, you ought to check that shit out. Because John Favreau, oh my God, he fucking they they're killing it. Rick Famuyiwa, they're just killing it over there. And um. I've always made, I always made fun of Star Wars. Not because I really, really hated it. It's just I saw people excited about shit and being a comedian, you, you just make fun of it. Up, right. Yeah, you just make fun of it, right? You're a miserable fuck, aren't you? Uh, I'm gonna fuck up not, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as like uh, I used to be. Now I kind of do it more fun. But when I was a younger comic, when I was really angry, I wasn't miserable prick. But... Uh, so anyway, I've, I've always Joe made... Joe Rogan was the angry um, comic, too, at one time. You ever see Joe Rogan stand up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's pretty tough. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that guy, uh, that's one, he's one of the best comedians I've ever seen. Like, his energy on stage is uh, unique. There's no, the first time I saw him was at the Kowloon in Saugus. It was a Chinese restaurant. Like, for some reason... Chinese restaurants and stand-up comedy in Boston. They just always had a room in the back or a room upstairs. In this place, they had a room upstairs. Always and me, food, yeah. Huh? Yeah, and me and... I, like, uh, I think I would like the Chinese restaurants, but they have good food there. Huh? Yeah, and East Coast Chinese food, too, which is the shit. So um, I went with late, great Patrice O'Neill, and we went and watched him, and we're just fucking blown away. There was nobody... There was this weird thing with Boston comedy where... You had this Mount Rushmore people that created it and they didn't leave, um, didn't want to leave, you know, and they were making great money. So you had to leave and establish yourself and then come back and then you could headline. So he was the guy we were looking at. Like, how did he do that? Like, how was he still in his 20s headline in the Kowloon? Because mm -hmm. that it just you couldn't you couldn't get that. That gig did not exist for our generation. And he did it. So we're like, all right, let's go down and check this guy out, see if this guy's as good as people say. He was, he was, that's when he was doing the, uh, you ever see Tiger's fucking? His, that was his closing bit. And he sounded just like a tiger, and he acted this shit out. I just, like the, I remember the sonic, like assault of that bit in a great way was just like, there was like, that bit alone was better than what my whole generation was doing collectively when we watched that. So I was just like, and that was one of those things when you saw a guy that good, that it, it couldn't not have an impression on you that you had to be like. So do you think that's your biggest influence? That was, there's comics and there's certain sets and he's both. Joe Rogan at the Kowloon mm -hmm. in fucking, I mean, I'm talking like 94. Mm -hmm. It was before I moved to New York. Me and Patrice went down and we watched him. And we were just like, Patrice what the... not with us no more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it I sucks. I was at his, one of the, one of the last, what, we roast Charlie Sheen or something. That was the last roast that he had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that'll never not be sad. That guy, yeah. If he was still alive, you wouldn't know who I was or a lot of other people because he was, he was, uh, he was so good. But that was what made it great because he was so good you'd never had a competitive thing with them. Mm -hmm. Like in order to compete with somebody, they have to be somewhere within my sight. And he was just over the horizon and just so, when he went on stage, I, you just became, you stopped being a comedian, you just became like a fan of stand-up. And that's what Rogan did when I saw him at the Kowloon. Like I stopped being like, okay, how do I get there? And he, okay, he moved to LA, I just, I just forgot all of that shit and just started enjoying the show. And, um, yeah, I almost felt like I should have paid him because <laughs> I, I was sitting there like an audience member. And people are that way with you when they see certain bits that you do, like your helicopter bit. They look at that and go, okay, you're hitting that from so many different angles, so many different perspectives. That's really You know what's funny? I flew with the guy that was the dude flying, and he had seen me do the bit, and he never brought it up. How really? Cool, how cool is that? I had to find out afterwards. 